What's up guys, welcome back, and the Emerald Trees King tank is finally done. It's something I've been putting off for a while and I've been wanting to do, but their new forever home is finally complete, and this video is showing exactly how I did it, so let's jump into it. Before we begin, if you guys like reptile related content, click the subscribe button down below for more. So first things first, the tank I'm using for this build is Zoomed 18x18x36 Paludarium. For the background, I'm using 1 inch thick insulation board. I cut the insulation board using a multi-tool. You can use a razor knife, but I just found this to be easier. I dry fit all the pieces beforehand to make sure everything fit nice. Keeping the work area clean makes everything easier, and it also keeps my wife happy, so I clean throughout the process. Now it's time to carve. So for this I'm using a wire wheel to carve out the background. You can use different techniques with this to get different textures. Keep in mind this will kick up debris, so glasses may be a good idea. I carved channels into the foam to make it look like rocks. This whole process is a mess so make sure you keep a shot vac handy. I cleaned up so well after this my wife had no idea it even happened. Next I used the heat gun to tighten up the foam. The heat gun shrinks the foam surface and it almost becomes smoother. It gets rid of a lot of the grooves that the wire wheel makes. This is the final product. Now it's time to silicone the panels and paint. For this build, I used the dry lock method. I used non-toxic acrylic paint to color the dry lock. It's definitely easier to paint the panels before you go and silicone it into place, but I was just tired of working on the ground. Siliconing the panels first assured that it didn't drop any paint onto the floor. I applied beads of silicone on the enclosures back and sides and applied the foam panels. I pushed tightly assuring the foam would stick to the silicone. I mix black, brown, and lighter brown acrylic paint to get the base color. I kept adding paint until I was satisfied with the color. I then applied the dry lock paint mixture with a paintbrush until the background was fully painted. This process took a long time, and if you have a tank this big, you need to be patient. I was happy with the way the base coat of dry lock dried, so I added more colors to give the background depth. Now it was time to tape the cork grounds where I wanted them and to spray foam them into place. You can use whatever materials you want, I personally used cork ground because I thought it gave a good surface area for the emerald tree skinks to climb and it also provided enough holes and cracks for them to go and hide in. I personally also love cork ground. I couldn't find my usual gaps and cracks spray foam that I use, so I used this one. It was a little sticky but it ended up working out fine. Once the spray foam cured, I carved it on how I wanted it to look. Once I was done carving, I then did the same process with the dry lock. I then took an empty pill bottle, and I'm going to use this to help me drain the drainage layer. I don't have a lot of space, so this is my method of choice for draining my tanks. I drilled into the pill bottle using a quarter inch drill bit. This is just wide enough for airline tubing to fit into, so I can siphon the water out of the drainage layer when needed. Be careful when drilling. I do use power tools every day, so I am used to them and how they feel, and I knew when the drill bit was going to go through. I also cut notches in the bottom of the pill bottle so water can pass through. Now it's time for the drainage layer. I'm using clay hydro balls. Spread them evenly and make sure you don't knock the pill bottle over when you're placing it around there. After the drainage layer is in place, I place the garden weed barrier for a substrate divider. I 
I cut the edges about 2 inches longer so I can fold it up along the tank to ensure that substrate does not get into the drainage layer. Next, I use my own version of an ABG mix. I'll put all the substrates I used right on the screen. I also added an established substrate from the old Emerald Tree Skink tank. I packed the edges down, making sure that no substrate gets down to the drainage layer. I used springtails and dwarf white isopods for a cleanup crew. Once the cleanup crew was in place, I added more established substrate, and then I added sphagnum moss and magnolia leaf litter. After I did this, I also planted the tank with plants of my choice. Note, I did buy some of these plants from Lowe's, but I washed them out, I washed the roots out, and I planted them out in a different substrate for a while to make sure my animals are safe. My animal safety is a priority. I used bird's nest fern, mother-in-law's tongue, golden pothos, wandering jew, an assorted plant from Petco, and a big bromeliad that I got from Lowe's. I use thicker, hardier plants because these guys like to climb and they can be destructive at times. My intention is that the golden pothos and the wandering jew will grow upward working their way up towards the top of the tank and sticking to the background. Before I move these guys in, I'm going to let this tank cycle and let it grow in for a bit. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the way this tank came out and I'm very happy these guys have their new permanent home. That's the video for today guys, I hope you all enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you guys like the content, please, by all means, subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it, and I'll see you all in the next one.